Who said big is better? Well, it might have been me, especially in standing in front of one of these things. This is a Perceptive Pixel 82-inch touchscreen device that you can work with a lot of different ways. We're going to show you how Office works with it today. Um, Perceptive Pixel works with the technology that you find in those touch phones. It's, if you've ever worked on a, a touch screen a few years ago, sometimes it, it doesn't really respond that well. It might be working with different optics. This works with a technology called ProCap, which is the same thing we work with our phones and uh, surfaces like device and other tablets. So it's very responsive to touch, multi-touch. I'm just touching the screen to advance the slides here. Now, Perceptive Pixel by Microsoft comes in two different uh, devices. There's an 82-inch device, which I'm on now, and there's also a smaller 55-inch device. Now, again, it works very responsive, and we'll just kind of show you some of the things that you can work on with it. One thing to think about is, even though this is a giant thing that you haven't really thought of before, an 82-inch touchscreen, it is just Windows. This is the same Windows you would have. So any software you wanted to load on here, you could. You could certainly use it. It has all the, the you know, if you know the touch commands for Windows, you stroke in from the left-hand side and you can go through your different screens. Um, it, uh, it, you can load other programs onto it and work through. Um, we're going to look through here. Let me uh, switch over to, uh, this is a, one thing they use to demo. And this kind of shows you the, the multi-touch which, which this has. Yeah, I'm going to throw a few pictures on here. And you can work with touch gestures to make things bigger, rotate them. Um, I'm using, you can use two hands at once with this multi-touch. Um, this one's kind of cool. You can bring in a video and play the video. Let's make that a little bigger. As the video is playing, I can just grab screenshots out of it if I want to. Oops, let's grab one a little differently. There we go. So it works, again, with this idea that you can work with images. You can come up and, and touch and work with it. So ideas, collaboration, meetings all have a different area. Instead of passing a computer around, it's all up here. People can come up and interact at the same time and work with their documents and their functionality and work in different ways and means. You can see here the video plane of how it works with multi-touch. But again, it's just Windows and it's just Office. So the latest version of Office came with touch controls. Let's open up PowerPoint and see how you might use it in a meeting. Let me switch over here to another PowerPoint. And if you are on a touch monitor, I have a touch screen computer, you have touch controls. So you can have a little, so your fingers can move a little better. So if you're on a Surface or a, a, a 82-inch um, touchscreen like this one, so let's go ahead and run this slideshow as I might in a meeting. And at the same time, this comes with the computer. If you need a keyboard and mouse to do a lot of inputting, you can do that. Also comes with a pen, so you can interact a little, a little finer detail. So as I go through here again, it's just kind of a, a brush of my finger is moving the pages through on the, um, on the PowerPoint. Which, again, if on the live feed, it's not going to look as clear as it would here in the room. But again, we're, I could be interacting with people here in the room and people online at the same time. I could hand control over to some other and folks, and they could work on the notes and the slides together. But again, touch controls do a couple other things. So even though I'm in presentation mode here, which a lot of people think is a, kind of a very static, with Office and Touch, you can directly go to Slides if you want to. I can use the pen and make notes here. I can circle things, make notes, tell people this is wrong. You know, because I like doing that. that. That's wrong. Like, I know what this graph means here. You know, so you can make notes on here, and the notes stay in the presentation. I'm in presentation mode, but you get touch controls when you are on a touch screen, uh, either a surface or uh, a perceptive pixel. And there's some other controls here that come in. In fact, you know, usually the touch controls come up in the bottom of the screen, but when I touch the screen, they appear to the side. So this way I can, I can advance or use different pen colors if I wanted to. But again, it makes it a more collaborative and a more uh, um, 
it's fun too. I mean, I should just point that out. It's just fun to kind of work with this in a large screen area where you might have a screen like this. Let's show you a couple um, other areas here. Ah, see, you can also, it will tell you, do you want to keep your uh, inking or not? Let's go ahead and keep it for now. And there it stays in the presentation. Let's switch over to uh, OneNote. Everyone knows I'll always talk about OneNote. It's my, one, easily one of my favorite. Uh, it is my favorite Office program. I'm sorry, Access. Um, but uh, this, again, can work in a lot of different ways. Now, OneNote, starting in 2002 when it came out, was made for the first versions of tablets to have a pen to work on it. So you can do a couple other things. So, again, if we're working with this um, page here and I just wanted to work on it, I can write notes and erase notes. I can take pictures and move them with touch. Let's get the faces out of there. Uh, let's see here. I want to get this out. Whoops. There we go. So you can bring other pictures in. And expand pictures and make them bigger. Again, it's all very responsive to that. Now, the other thing with OneNote is it was designed for writing. So if you're taking meeting notes here, you can do it right in the screen. Kind of odd to do meeting notes on an 82-inch screen, but you can uh, work with them. Um, so I can write here. And again, you're seeing the notes online. I'm, everyone here in the room is seeing the notes. It's, you know, when your camera's on you and your back's turned, it's kind of hard to remember how to spell things. Okay. Now, one of the things that, that um, that's kind of good chicken scratch, but one, uh, one of the things that happens here with uh, working with uh, OneNote is you can certainly keep the pen writing there, but there's also, and it's, yeah, it's been there's design, there is a convert ink to text. So if you watch the text and I press the button, it turns it into, it turns in it into this. But again, you can do it either way. Keep it either way that you'd like to work with on OneNote. Let's uh, do show one more thing. So one thing that we've seen a lot of lately is the uh, how Excel's been used with uh, BI, business intelligence. We've seen a lot of these called power tools. Um, there is, uh, we'll talk next week about Power Pivot. We're going to show you something called Power Map. Now, this is a huge spreadsheet of natural disasters in the last 40 years. And, the, I mean, there's five tabs for tornadoes and hurricanes. There are, you know, there are thousands of rows of data. I think one of the sheets has 40,000. Longitude, latitude, start time. We're going to put that in and open up Power Map. Now, you can build what's called a tour. I'm going to show one just for time's sake, one that's pre-made, that looks at a the time of... of all that data and kind of runs a tour of that data. So as I run it here, it, this can go full screen, but I'm just going to leave it in this, this mode here. What you're seeing is that data going through, and you can see the calendar as it spins through starting with 1973. You can see the tracks of the hurricanes, and they'll pick up here in, in the late fall. Tornado Alley with all the purple dots. You have uh, the yellow dots are earthquakes, so if I kind of spin over here, and show you the Pacific Ocean. You can kind of see that ring of fire, as they call it, that has all the active earthquakes. You can see some, uh, I guess that would be cyclones in the Pacific, not, not uh, hurricanes. And again, you can interact with the map here, make it bigger or smaller. You can, you can prove the world's flat if you want to, go to a full frame like that. But again, that's some of the technology that is great to show folks, but it also the interactivity and the way you can collaborate with a large screen kind of really shows off, you know, this is an Excel spreadsheet, folks. This is not the Excel spreadsheet I grew up with, that's for sure. This shows you the technology, and I think it really shows to the technology of what can work with on something like a perceptive pixel device that you would have in meeting rooms. Again, a 55-inch or this, the 82-inch. There's a lot more information about perceptive pixel. And we'll have links to all that. If you go to aka.ms slash 82 inch, we have links to Perceptive Pixel, also Power Map if you're interested in that. Any information about the Office Webinar Series, we'll be back in our regular space next week. aka.ms slash offweb. Next week, we're going to be talking about one of those BI tools called Power Pivot for Excel. 
But for today's webinar crew, thank you for joining this Office 15-Minute Webinar.